Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to discuss another new product that I'm adding to my store in regards to making your lives a lot easier when it comes to installing accessories for your system. I get questions on this topic all the time about shielding, EMI, proper connectors, um, I mean everything. It's, it's all basically been covered and I decided to put a package together that will make hooking up your accessories as painless as possible. Um, here's what we got going. First I started with the cable and again I only choose the best cables. We got 22 AWG, 80 degrees Celsius temperated, 300 volt shielded um, signal cable. So for you guys that aren't familiar with signal cable, I use it on a lot of my applications. This is pro grade stuff. It's super flexible and this cable is double shielded. It's 22 AWG and for general accessories, this is primarily the cable that is best suited. It's super narrow, super flexible. It'll bend around those compound curves real easy around your machine and being she's double shielded, you're going to have bulletproof protection when it comes to actual signals. That is pending you properly drain the system. That being said, this package will be sold in 10 foot increments. That's the starting length. If you guys require longer length, shorter length, you'll message me. I can make them in virtually any length you require. However, just to give you guys a heads up, the connector used is a GX16 three pin and to take the guesswork out of properly draining and grounding the system properly, your ground and drain is already hooked up on pin three. You've got all your drain going right to pin three. You're all set. You can see here on the connector, it's labeled one, two, and three. Um, these connectors are awesome. They make everything being connected to them just a simple hookup procedure. The thing you do want to keep in mind on the panel mount connector, connector side is that you do have a tab on top for those of you not familiar with these. So these plug in only one way. You can't accidentally plug them in the wrong way, which I love. On top of the fact that they're super heavy duty. I do get questions a lot on the proper soldering technique to use to attach your actual leads. I always like to start from the bottom. It gives you the most room and then work your way to the top. Again, that's my own user preference. It's up to you. I've done at least 300 of these connectors and I can tell you right now, I've never had one fail or give me any issues. Um, most guys, once they use them, they never want to go back to the others. They're simple to mount. And again, these are professional solutions and that's why they're used in the aviation industry. Um, once again, they just plug in. Once you align your tabs, take your screw lock connector. I like to go backwards on it, make sure my threads are good and then just go in. You don't have to tighten these too tight. Once they go in finger tight, you're good. You can see here we've got our stress relief. You can see this wire is actually too small for the stress relief, so I installed a rubber grommet. That rubber grommet then takes up the space. It does not allow any chafing on the wire, and you've got a professional connection here. The only thing on your side that you will have to do, of course, when you solder in your panel connector, you're going to solder in for your leads, one and two. One, of course, being hot, two being your, your negative, and, of course, three being your ground. And that being said, being we have our drain going to pin three on the female connector, all you'll have to do is solder pin three to your ground bar in your enclosure. Now, why did I choose the enclosure? Well, I like putting my grounds in my enclosure most of the time because you should have a ground bar in your enclosure virtually all the time. I don't usually see that done online much. Um, I always put a ground bar in. It's just, it's just best practice. Um, and then it makes things a lot easier to maintain. It keeps all those extra grounds off your chassis and all out of your accessory lines because I think some of you guys get, get a little bit confused when it comes to which end to put it on. I hear it all the time. So I figured I'd just take the guesswork out. All you need to do is install a ground bar in your chassis. And then that, pin, that number three pin always goes to the ground bar and you're set. It's very, very simple to do. As far as the other end, of course, it's ready for you to strip and attach your accessory, once again being two leads. To show you the internals of the cable, we've got one here, a little piece that's actually been opened up. You can see you've got tin braided copper as your first line of defense on your shielding. You also have a mylar foil as your second line of defense. This cable will provide virtual bulletproof signals once you apply that third pin to the ground bar. I promise you guys, this is the cable to use. Um, for virtually all accessories and that was the thing I wanted something that was going to be overkill for some machines and for, and for other machines it's the proper way to go I get guys that want plasmas I get guys that want water jets I get guys that are doing you know full-scale Bridgeport retrofits uh, I've done semen retrofits it doesn't matter what it is I wanted to make sure the cable would fit every machine and that's why I chose this for certain machines if you got a Shapiko or you know smaller chassis I have guys say man that's a really heavy-duty setup for that it is and once again I've chosen this because it's backwards compatible there's no such thing as overkill when it comes to protecting from EMI this is to this cable and setup is totally uh, reverse compatible as far as if you do decide to upgrade you can always use 
better cable and, and better connectors with your new system. So again, there's no loss here. It's better to do it right the first time, and that's what I did. Once again, by doing actually attaching the, the uh, connector on the chassis end and giving you the panel mount, you guys have a full assembly here. You're ready to go. I mean, once you actually attach those two leads to your actual accessory, you're all set. I mean, I tried to keep it as simple as possible, and I think, once again, this this takes all the guesswork out. Um, and again, it's it's going to be reasonably priced. Right now, I haven't got the pricing structure down yet. I have to total up all parts, components of labor, but I'm going to try to keep it as reasonable as possible. And again, for as close to a plug-and-play unit as possible for your accessories, this is it. And like I said, it takes the guesswork out. Once again, guys, I thank you all for your support. If you do have any questions, please message me at my personal email. It's storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313 at gmail.com. You can also uh, use the link on the bottom of the description of the video to get to my eBay store. Uh, I'll also put the link for these in there, and you guys are all set. And once again, if you need them in a custom size, there's no cookie cutter systems. I say this in every video, and I mean it. Every system is different. Every application is different. You just tell me what you need. We'll do our best to compensate you with lengths. Um, and this way you're all set. If you do need another type of cable, um, I get asked this a lot. I try to carry the majority of the cable for the jobs that cover the majority of systems. Um, two lead is typically what's required for accessories. If you feel you're going to need more than that, you can message me. I'll give you the best price I can, but, but keep in mind, any custom ordering is going to have custom fees attached to it. There's nothing I can do about that. So if, if I have to carry more overhead, you guys have to pay that. So that's why I say I try to make it as feasible as possible with what we're trying to do. And again, uh, this will cover about 95% of all machines. So it's just a matter of what application you're using. And again, let me know and I'll do my best to work with you. I'll give you guys some options. If you know, if you do have multi-cable type machines where your accessories require a lot of cabling, we'll see what we can do. I mean, there's always 18.4 standard shield that you can use, but under general practice, the 18.4 is excellent cable for general use. The only difference is it's much thicker, it's less flexible, and of course it's not double shielded. Um, and it certainly doesn't come with the connector already attached and whatnot. So there are some variables there, um, but overall I wanted to offer, like I said, a plug and play setup, and I think we've, we've done that. So again, if you guys need anything, you've got, you'll have the information. You just get in touch with me and we'll see what we can do. Thank you again. Take care.